Dee arrived to see the tense faces of the command crew. What happened? She got escaped. We don't know how, but she managed to open her cell. Oh, of course. And security? Eight marines in an serious condition with a nearby conduct. Blue. Obviously not a coincidence. I really got security turning the ship inside out to find her, but she somehow managed to bypass all our cameras too. Took us a good half an hour until we realized that all the footage was fake. We're up against prototype here. Her brain has been artificially augmented to perform feats beyond our imagination. Her objective is got to be escape. We need to disassemble the library now. We've already placed it in lockdown. That won't be enough. Start by removing the fusion reactor and then take off all the limbs. Damn, we could have used it during the battle. To think we have to take apart our own rider. With the pilot, there is no point in keeping it. We need to avoid the worst case scenario of having it used against us. <laughs> Do what he says, Commander. You have the opportunity to remove the Liberty's reactor. Do it immediately. Sir! Ja. Just disembodying the Liberty won't be enough. Oh, she could still escape on the shuttle, or a lifeboat, or any other of the riders. Still plenty of holes in the plan, huh? Everyone's actually peaked when the ship's alarm went off! What now? Contact! Red alert! Keys, there is supply operations and manned battle stations! A packed loyal fleet headed our way, approximately 300 strong. How did they get past the Alliance's defensive line? Shh. We are getting reports of a single packed rider decimating their forces. The combined fleet has been split in two, allowing the packed strike fleet to pass through and approach the rear allies. A single packed rider. That can only be one thing. She still vividly remember the grotesque power of the Nightmare Ascendant. In the previous timeline, they had only just barely fitted it thanks to the power of the Combined Fleet and Fontana's Fortress. But this time, the conditions of the battle were completely different. Instead of fighting the front lines with the full support of the Alliance, they now faced the Nightmare Ascendant in an ambush. Further, Fontana's fleet was still not operational. Is the Nightmare Ascendant an ancient Ruvian rider now controlled by the leader of the prototypes? On top of overwhelming firepower and defenses, the prototype leader can somehow awaken just like Asaga and Sola, making it nigh invincible. And you say you defeated in your limelight? Yeah, yeah, but only with the help of the combined fleet and Fontana's allied forces. Shh, sounds like you were playing on easy mode when you went through this. Yes, the other things turn towards the tactical mode. We should have seen this ambush coming. With their spy on board, the sun already exposed and Fontana to their sabotage effort, the prototype's best bet is to kill us all before Fontana's ships enter into play. That means you've already thought of a plan, right? Unfortunately, our counterattacks are limited. The sun still hasn't completed its reply, while the Liberty is out of commission. Even knowing the ambush was going to occur, our only option was to meet it head on. The combat fleet is still tangled with a size body remainder of packed ships. The Alliance will not be able to spare many ships to come to our aid. We fall here, the Park Strike Fleet will completely route the resupply line, meaning the Combined Fleet will then face an attack from the rear, with no fallback position. Put Fontana on the line! Sir! Shh, looks like Alice has made her move. We are still on our way from removing the virus warships. We will have to hold out until then. We don't have an hour, Fontana. I don't care if you leave half your ships behind. Get your forces in order to and assist us with whatever you can master. Very well. Establish the most sensitive on our assault carriers. We prioritize repairing our fast cruisers only, when we could be by our side in 15 minutes. Alright, no change. After she got the channel with Fontana, Asaga's voice crackled through the calm. This is the Rider Squad, standing by! Good, begin sorting immediately. The map filling up with red all around us. Watch out for the new Pack Rider! Target destination, Ascendant, it's lost technology, and his pilots can awaken just like you. Hunters! What the? Suddenly, the rank of a radius thrust their peak the comms output. Huh? The Black Jack's taking off without me? Shit. Close the hunger gate! Negative. If you use the emergency over right now, we won't be able to launch any of the other riders either. She sort himself from the tactical map and ran towards the hunger. Where are we going? No point in having two Kaido shields on the bridge! I'm leaving the battle to you. You're still the captain of the ship. I'm going to stop that little piece of crap. Alright. Good luck, partner. Yeah, yeah, good luck. With that, Shields entered the lift and went down to deck 2. Shields entered the hangar to see the deck crew desperately trying to keep the blackjack from launching. They had somehow managed to attach a ceiling mounted electromagnetic clamp onto one of the shoulder party guns while a spare rifle jumped the launch rail. Shit, no. Get back! 
The lockjack leaned down and fired its engine, sending the crew scattering in every direction. The hangar groaned as the ceiling superstructure holding the clamp slowly bent against the blackjack. Asaga arrived on a buggy. Captain, we've got situation! No kidding, come on, we've got to figure out a way to keep that little piece of crap from escaping with your ride. The ship's flag guns echoed through the hangar. The ship shook as a missile impacted, sending shields to the floor. Shit, as if that was enough, looks like the battle's begun. Steel ground overhead. Shields looked up just in time to see the steel supports holding the clown finally give out. Watch out! He dived on top of Saga as steel and concrete rained around them. Luckily, the debris fell a short distance away, covering both of them in dust, but not causing any injuries. Finally loose, the blackjack hit its thrusters and flew across the hangar. Now oh, it's got a getaway! At the last second, the paladin stepped out of its maintenance back a bay and blocked the exit. HALT! The blackjack stopped and drew its assault rifle. No! Oh. He grabbed Asaga by the elbow and sprinted for cover. The blackjack unleashed a torrent of bullets inside the hangar, sending scrapnel ricocheting throughout the hangar. An unlucky crewman took a brick sized fragment to the shoulder, cleaving a foot long opening down his chest. Instantly killed, his body sprayed blood as it fell to the ground. Sheik suppressed his noisy as shrapnel bounced all around him. Fool! The paladin, unaffected by the small caliber fire tanks to its murmur, shot forward and collided with the blackjack. Two steel behemoths struggled against each other like two enormous sumo warriors. Blackjack opened his missile plots. Uh, if it fires off its missiles in here, the whole ship's gonna blow. Just then, the phoenix shoot forth katana drown. The blackjack shot its reverse thrusters, narrowly avoiding getting cleaved in half. It spun its pulse gun into sword mode and activated its laser beam. <laughs> Never thought it'd be fighting the blackjack in the ship's hangar. The blackjack hit its wing thrusters, boosting forward. The phoenix nimbly moved out of the way, sending a blackjack crashing into a mighty bay. Uh, Shields braced his head against the cacophony of collapsing steel. The blackjack turned around and swept its laser beam, but the phoenix once again proved too fast, spinning out of the way. Shh, this place is too damn small, and I can't use my assault guns either. The phoenix shot upwards, skimming against the ceiling, and came down in a powerful calm crusher. The blackjack deflected the phoenix's katana with its black iron blade. The phoenix ducked at the blackjack's beam sword slash literally, laterally, cutting through another mountain's bay. Too slow. Its beam sword still moving on its own momentum, and its black iron sword too heavy to raise in time. The phoenix shot forward and deftly dug its sword in the blackjack's shoulder. Psh, can't get enough momentum going on here. Not to mention this, gravity is killing my speed. Shields grabbed a handheld microphone. Ikari! The missile pods! Crap! Just Ikari eyes, the blackjack could destroy the entire ship at any moment, the blackjack tumbled to the floor. Shields saw the Bianca approaching it, its ground gun active. I've got this! Lord! Pull the reactor out! Understood! Just then, Shields realized he had made a huge mistake. Wait a minute! And trust Claude with pulling out a highly explosive fusion reactor with a grav gun? Before Shields could retract his order, sparks flew from the back of the blackjack as its reactor was torn out. Turn out. He squeaked his eyes shut and pressed himself flat on the floor, expecting the worst. Miraculously, when he slowly opened his eyes, the reactor was safely on the floor and everyone was still alive. The flight crew floated the hangar and to contain the situation. With a brief of relief, he ran towards the now deactivated blackjack as well. Right and run, don't open the cockpit until ship security arrives. Put the reactor into cold sleep. Sir! Huh? Is the blackjack alright? Looks like its arm's gonna have to be replaced with a spare, and it also needs a new reactor, but it's something we can handle. Everyone else, you really need it outside. Sortie and protect the ship. Copy! With most of the hangar destroyed, the remaining grinders had no choice but to slowly file out of the gate instead of using the linear rail. Meanwhile, the other Kaito Sheets was caught in the middle of another life or death slug room. Three packed battleships approaching, torpedo lock detected! Shields looked at the tactical map. The bulk of the combined fleet was still tied up with the main pack fleet. Roughly 100 Alliance cruisers and two dozen battleships were stationed at the resupply line, but more than half of them were already damaged a prior day and locked down for repairs or in the middle of resupply operations. Meaning he was both hopelessly outnumbered and outgunned. Fire ventral thrusters! 
The Sunray shook as it descended, coming alongside the trio of Alliance cruisers. They won't be firing their main guns, but their flag guns should still be operational. Torpedoes incoming, free from above! The Sunray's flag guns burst around the ship, lightning the black void of space up with a million explosions. Come on, come on! He exhaled when the flag guns on the cruisers activated, adding to the Sunray's wall of fire. The nose of the forward torpedo fragmented as soon as it entered the flag's shield. And spoon. Shield? <laughs> and now I know it is that. Okay. While before getting pulled apart by the G forces. You know, shield shields, kiter shields. One down. The second torpedo stubbornly continued through the vortex of explosions, straight with shrapnel but still not losing structural integrity. Sweat purred down shield's forehead. All he could do was pray. Finally, the torpedo gave away to the relentless assault of shrapnel, splintering into a million shreds. But shield slug had run out. The final torpedo survived flag and headed on a direct course for the Sunrider's tower. All hands, brace for impact! Shields gripped the table as the bridge shook. Hit on deck 1! Fires reported on section 30, 14! Loss of pressure at section 15! No damage to core systems! The pack battleships were still too far away for the Sunrider to engage. Their missiles would be instantly shot down by flood, while their lasers were useless against the enemy shields. Where are you, riders? Velina Rail is, in is inoperative. They are still attempting to sortie. Just then, the Phoenix shot out from the mouth of the ship. <laughs> Sorry for blade! Had to walk out! The rest of the riders flew out one by one. What about the Blackjack? Temporarily out of commission, crews trying to put it back together as quick as they can. Shh, outnumbered, and now lacking both the Liberty, which is not really useful, and Blackjack. Shields rack his head for a strategy. Power surge detected from enemy battleships! Crimson beams of light shot from the battleships, burning trails of fire across the hull of the Sunrider. Shields hang on as the bridge swayed. He heard the groaning of seal as the ship's structural lattice work melted away. Without the Liberty Shields, we are toast. Please, don't joke. I upgraded the Sunrider pretty powerfully from what I remember. And Bla uh, Liberty wasn't in the need there. It was useless. More lasers cut through the ship. A console burst flinging a crewman to the ground with facial burns. Shh, is this the end? Just then, the space around the battleships distorted. A battle group of 50 pack fast cruisers emerged from warp. The daggers drop down above the battleships and lose kinetic ground after kinetic ground as they divide as they die towards the enemy's huge profile. The battleships attempt to return fire, but from the front the fast cruisers were hardly larger than corvettes. Corvettes. The battleships round shot past the fire rain down from above. Shield side in relief as the battleships fragmented from relentless high storm of steel. Well but it's for keeping waiting, Shields! I never thought I'd actually be glad to see your face, Fontana. Now it's not the time to rest. The situation is still dire. Without a moment's break, Ava turned to shields. Captain, incoming enemy, it's a. The nightmare ascendant appeared before the Sun Rider, its wings proudly outstretched. So, you're the enemy that I've heard so much about. Shields, I have no idea how you managed to intercept our spy or discover the sabotage show down to the Fontana ships. But the whole of that will be meaningless if you and the Alliance fleet are destroyed. Holy, this is not the Sun Rider! Okay! A swarm of prototypes units launched from packed carriers. Contacts. <laughs> so? And as soon as wing flyers detached and darted towards the Sunrider. Shh, we hold the line here! The Phoenix opened fire and sprayed the flyers with assault rounds, but they nimbly flew out of the Phoenix firing arc. Fast little buggers! Two flyers circled around the shot for spears of light. The Phoenix fired two of its wing thrusters, narrowly dodging the beams in a high G corkscrew. Providence awaits. Solas right eye ignited as they awakened. The movement of drones suddenly slowed the Solas senses, as if they were swimming underwater. Focus on her target, she lined up a shot and fed the Seraphim's rifle with power. A flash later, Solas shot tore a hole into the drone's mid section before erupting it into fireball. Thanks! The other drone spun around and came to the at the Phoenix from another pass, but this time Carrie was prepared. She stepped on her foot pedals, 
feeding maximum energy to the engines, the Phoenix shot forward on an intercept vector for the drone. Yeah! With near inhuman finesse, the Phoenix shot past the drone, Katana drone, and sliced it from the front to the end. The rear of Icarus cockpit illuminated as the drone exploded behind her. Two down! Before Ikari could separate a dark shadow stretch across her rider. Shit! The spoon out of the way seconds before the ascendant descended upon the phoenix and cleaved it apart with its great sword. That's one hell of a huge sword! <laughs> the ascendant swaggered towards the phoenix, sword raised above its head. Ikari barely managed to block the ascendant's blade in time. Despite its titanic size, the ascendant moved quick as a viper. I think has three reactor cores. No matter how you look at it, I'm one out Mars here. The ascendant merely shoved the Phoenix out of the way with another mighty downward stride. The Phoenix katana shattered into a million pieces. Shit! Ikari fired her wing thrusters in a panic, but her moment of carelessness allowed the drone to line up a shot. The beam tore through one of the Phoenix's wing thrusters, sending it spiraling out of control. Ah! Uh -huh. Providing assistance! Solar rain down shots, Alice's eyes ignite, ignited blue as she awakened and deflected the bullets with two swings of the great sword. Impossible! The tip of Ascendant's parting lung glowed red as it let forth a scarlet lance cutting into the Seraphine's leg and slicing apart its scanner dish. <laughs> Solar, are you right? Yeah, but the Seraphine is no longer fit to find. Returning to base. The Phoenix is out too, Captain. I want the sword. I can never go out here. Yeah, I can't beat back while you to escape. Shh, don't be think crazy while I'm gone, soldier boy. Ah, of course. The Pauline bank in trifle gains its shield and moves in to cover the two riders' escape. Its three cannons rotated forward and shoot high density black iron towards the ascendant. Useless! The ascendant fires one of its knee thrusters, cork shriek towards the Paladin. Shh. All of the Palanese missile poles opened, sending streams of smoke spiraling outwards. The Ascendant nimbly dodged through the missiles. The missiles which did impact put Snary as crunch the ancient rider's frame. Oh yeah! At that moment the Bianca used its gravity gun to immobilize the Ascendant. No! Thanks! The Palin unloaded all of its munitions into the Ascendant at point blank rate. Smoke and fire enveloped the Ascendant as it received volley after a volley of cannon fire, a swarm of missiles, and even a stream of assault rounds for good measure. It would seem too good to be true if Ascendant went down so easily. Griska's blood went cold when she sensed movement behind her. <laughs> Alice licked her lip as the Ascendant struck from the Paladin's blind spot. Somehow it had managed to escape from the Bianca's gravity well and circled around behind the Paladin. <laughs> The Paladin barely deflected the Ascendant's sword with its ablative shield. The Paladin's entire arm bent from the strike, sending sparks flying from its joints. Say goodnight! Just as Ascendant was about to deliver the Cup of the Grace, a cross guard of laser and steel blocked its sword from reaching the Paladin. Yeah. The so called Shar of Rivia! Sorry for being late, had to feed the Liberty's reactor into Blackjack before it could move again. Asaga hit the reverse thrusters moments before the ascendant overpowered his defenses. The blackjack whirled out of the way as the ascendant fired its parting gun. Its remaining drones spurred towards the blackjack like hounds onto prey. In a flurry of pulse balls, Asaga took two more of the drones out, before ducking and weaving through a cobweb of lasers. Spinning in a wild dance, it shot a stream of particles from its shoulder guns, cutting through a third drone. The tip of the particle gun began to char black and rapidly overheat. Crap, the library's director feeding way more power than usual. Shigar must have milled modified it to generate a lot more energy to power her ECM suit. All the blackjack's movement felt jerky, like a wild bull. One false move could cause the blackjack to spill out of control, or worse, cause the thruster to burst. But for some reason, Asaka's face broke into a grin. This power. I like it! She's going berserk. She slammed down her foot pedal, sending the blackjack forward with explosive speed. Asaga clenched her teeth as she was plastered against her seat. She shot towards the nightmare ascendant, her blade da drone. The ascendant raised its sword high and shot forward well. 
Shields put his hands together in prayer as he saw the two streaks of light closing one on each other on the bridge. Asaga, please come back alive. I'll show you what a true shark can do! Hey, you know what? Mobile Suit Gundam. I'm actually watching it now. And there was a shark as well, however written differently. It was with C instead of S and with one R. <laughs> so do you think is that you know connection? <laughs> Your toy snuffing is the might of ascendant! <laughs> eh? The two warriors' eyes burned with azure fire as they accelerated towards destiny. In an infinite instant, the two riders crossed each other, their swords moving quicker than what the universe could accept. The space time continued rippled as the swords tore through the universe's laws. The Black Jack's joints gave out, causing explosions throughout the rider. Sparks of electricity ran through its frame. Ah, Saga's cockpit burst, impaling her with shrapnel. shrapnel. Blood dripped down her face. She looked down in disbelief to see a thin steel rod sticking out from her belly. Fuck, no! Suddenly the pain struck her all at once. She collapsed in agony, her eyes losing focus. No way I lost that quickly. The ascendant approached the blackjack and grabbed it by its head. Completely untouched. <laughs> now do you understand, princess? You will never become as powerful as I! For the truth, our power is that it feeds upon our dark emotions. Twists and corrupts our minds, brings out the absolute evil lurking deep inside our hearts. Without hatred, you will never wield the power of shards. Without tasting the true horror of the blackest defeats, you have no place in war. Only we are destroyed in mind and body, stripped naked and strung down until every ember of hope has been extinguished. Can you truly hold the power of shards? Okay, the kind of shields from the future. Now is the time. You know, somehow get on board of li liberty. Somehow you get the reactor for it and freaking go to the battle. I have already died years ago. This woman is but an empty husk kept alive by this monstrous machine called the Ascendant. Hurrah! Asaga looked up, blood dripping down her mouth, the fire in her eyes extinguished. I learned something the past few days. Power brings arrogance. It makes you start thinking that you deserve to have stuff that doesn't belong to you. Twists up your insights whenever you get jealous. But you know, true power isn't about getting things. You can have all the love, wealth and influence in the galaxy and still be weak. Cause power ain't about the stuff you have. It's the stuff you can give that makes you powerful. Alyssa's eyes changed. She looked down coldly upon Saga, like a disappointed matron about to punish her young daughter. Foolish guy! Yeah? If you take this mouth, then all that awaits you will be logged this rebel death. As I thought, all those millennia ago. The throne of Rivia will bring certain doom to the unprepared. Abandon all pretenses of hope and destroy your enemies before they destroy you. Why? You're not. At that moment, Alice snapped back to attention. Shh, not again. I better end this quick before. I think it's time we said goodbye, Shar of Rivia. No. I'm afraid. It's your loss. What? Have you lost your mind? No. Because I managed to buy the captain enough time. Captain of the Combined Fleet has broken through the Pack Fleet. They're coming to assist. About time. Oh, come on. Admiral Piece of Crap. I think that was his name, right? If my blood is for a later hour, Captain. Yeah. I don't accept. Get your ass out in the battle. But thanks to the reinforcements not arriving, the enemy is running low on munitions. It will not be long until the tide turns our favor. <laughs> and I have further good news. A fleet of fresh pack assault carriers appeared from behind Sarah's moon. Thanks to your early warning, my engineers have now restored full control of our ships. My fleet is now back on the field. Yeah. Ships pumped the air, unable to contain his joy. His future self's gambit had worked. Even though she sh that little piece of crap's help, they had managed to restore Fontana's fleet. Well, actually, that would work out. Admiral, piece of crap. Engineer, piece of crap. They can be together. And everyone would be fine with that. 
No, I understand the Sender Rider has been giving you trouble! I'm afraid so, Admiral. Not only that, but it's pilots also the speed image of my ex-girlfriend. Kind of gives me the creeps. Ah! Finally! He said it! He said it! Ex-girlfriend! Yes! Kaito! You are normal again. Oh, well, do please hold back and unsightly uh, tears as we end here. All ships open fire! Ah, oh, head full! All ships on fire on the night are sent at us! You are in range! Ah. The Senate hit its thrusters, but the renewed stream of firepower was too thick to dodge. Oh, careful, Asaga! The Bianca used the moment to shoot down ca cables at the Blackjack and fall back towards the Sunrider. Thanks, Doc. No worries! Captain, our line of fire is not clear! On your word! No matter how many times this never gets sold! Executive order! Oh yeah! Fire the shit out of it! <laughs> <laughs> the nightmare sentinel was completely enveloped in fire as ships struck it from every direction. With the unexpected entry of Fontana's fleet, the tide of the battle had reversed. Everywhere around Alice, her ships lit on fire and broke apart against the onslaught of Fontana's assault carriers and advanced riders. At this rate, they would be completely annihilated. This was the high plan is! Huh? What was her fault? How did Deathful shit see through my sister's spy? He was completely under our control. Wait, his actions are only got consistent. Could he have had assistance from some side? Meddler? Shh, the wonder! So you have betrayed us! But that means... I may yet win! With the remaining energy remaining in the Ascendant, Ali spun her rider around. Captain, he's Ascendant! What the? The flaming hold of the Ascendant emerged from the Vanguard's beam and shot towards the Sunrider. It's only collision course for the ship! Fire! The sun really unloaded everything in its arsenal against the flaming comet, striking towards the ship, but it was too late. All hands, brace for impact! And that threw herself on top of sheets. The two pressed themselves against the ground as the entire ship trembled from the force of the collision. The hull around the bridge bent sparks exploding from every direction as power cords snapped. Vapor shot out and covered the bridge as pine shuddered from the force of the impact. Instruments hidden inside the walls blew in fireballs. Sending wall panels flying, the crew burst open the emergency lockers and grabbed fire extinguishers to combat the flames. Report! The Nightmare Ascender has crashed near engineering. All systems are catastrophically damaged. The reactor core's cooling system has been destroyed. If we do not restore the auxiliary system within 10 minutes, we will have a full scale meltdown on our hands. Order engineering to fix the reactor, double time. Unfortunately, we have lost all contact with engineers. Shit. Captain, intruder alert! What? Secure footage of the Sussendant's cockpit opening and Alice entering the twisted hull of the ship inside an environmental suit appear on the main screen. Shit, she's headed straight to engineering. Alert, security, stop her! Sir! Meanwhile, the future Kaito shields pushed through the burning corridor to get to engineering. The injured and dead were strewed throughout the floor, but he had no choice but to march on and complete his mission. If the prototype gets to our reactor, then it's game over. He finally arrived at the Pernic Engineering Hall. Vapor streamed out from over a dozen broken pipes and flames leaked at the walls. At his feet were the bullet ridden bodies of half a dozen marines. Shit, I was too late. He ducked for cover seconds before a stream of bullets riddled his position. Alice's voice echoed through engineering. You're too late, shit! Once the reactor gets down, I will die, and with that, this timeline shall revert to its original chronology. I don't know how you got the wonder to help you, but even she is not infallible. Just as I thwarted her plans in your timeline, I shall thwart her, her here again. Surrender, prototype. You should know that you die if the original timeline is restored. This is for your own good too. Heh, <laughs> that means nothing to a walking corpse such as I. Eyes open fire once more, pinning shields down. Damn. He drew his pistol, gouging from the sound of her weapon, shield through mist, she had commanded one of the marine's rifles. In other words, he was outmatched in terms of firepower. But she's still wearing nothing but her plug suit, 
and it will take is all it will take is one good shot to bring her down. Now, if only I can figure out where she's hiding. Shins keep talk kept talking, trying to use the prototype's voice to discern her position. Your fleet is defeated, and Fontana has control of Punk now. What do you have to gain by triggering total war between the Alliance and Fontana's forces? All that will happen is the destruction of all that you've worked for. All that I worked for? <laughs> do not think of her a moment. I had any notions of reading the Xeas Venichar, Empress, or some other meaningless title. I have no intention of raising the rewards from your wretched existence. All I saw was doom for our species. Good, keep talking. She's over there. Shields popped from cover and unloaded the huge pistol in the shadowy catwalk. Sparks flew as the already damaged supports fell apart, bringing the elevated path crashing down to a slope. Huh? Alice rolled down the collapsed catwalk, losing her grasp on her rifle. Shields used the opportunity to charge at her position. He aimed his pistol and pulled the trigger, but received a feeble kick out of ammo. In frustration, he tossed his pistol aside and bull rushed into Alice's gut just as she got back to her feet. Unexpectedly, excruciating pain shot down his spine. Huh? He ran headfirst into what felt like solid steel. He looked up just in time to see an energy barrier flicker in front of Alice. Hefu! <laughs> Shades mastered his strength and delivered a round of punches into Alice's chest, but his fists bounced off the energy field surrounding Alice. With a single backhand, Alice knocked Shades down off the floor, driving an explosion of blue sparks to his jaws. Shades spat blood from his mouth. <sighs> Do you think I would come here without personal shit? <laughs> Alice stepped on his prone body. Sparks of energy shot from her knee heel as he dug into Shin's ribs. Uh, Shin's could only hold helplessly as his flesh seared off. He desperately looked at the Sun Rider's reactor. Steam was pouring from its sides as the remaining colon rapidly evaporated. If he did not defeat Alice within minutes, the reactor would melt down <coughs> and completely destroy the entire ship. I'll kill you, Shin's. I want you to be there with me when the ship's reactor finally blows. We die together, you and I! <laughs> the reactor's side panel burst in an explosion of vapor, ruffling Alice's hair. How long have I waited for this moment to finally sink into the black void of death? I know, I should never see him where I am headed, but know that I, Alice Ashada, has saved the galaxy from humanity like a festering guest of roaches. Humanity will regret until it has consumed the galaxy. Then you will eat each other until nations fall and civilizations end! Humanity is but a sea of moaning naked bodies, wretched and poor. When one dares to rise above the crowd to bring about everyone's salvation, it will not be the rich and powerful in their ivory towers who bring about the hero's downfall, but the very masses who the hero solves to liberate. <clears throat> for the wretch cannot bear, bear to see one of them rising above them, for that only reminds them that they are pitiful, pathetic scum. They would rather keep festering in their holes than be saved. One day, you too will be betrayed, Shields, by the very galaxy you sought to protect. Nope. Even then, heroes must be born. The masses may be turned against us, but within that crowd, there will always be ones who cheer us on. When this happens, with the final reserve of his strength, Shields delivered a kick to Alice's guts, knocking her off balance. He shoved her off and rolled to his feet. Alice drew her saber and came at him. Shields, you must have a death wish! Before she could reach him, a bullet impacted against Alice's energy barrier. Kaito! Ava ran into engineering a pistol in hand. Shields used the opening to scramble into cover, while Alice dug back and grabbed her rifle. Ava and Shields pressed themselves against the workstation as Alice turned, returned rifle fire. Where's the rest of security? Already all dispatched! The rest are tied up below deck. Ava handed Shields a fresh pistol. I'll take her. You've got to activate the auxiliary cooling system. Alright. But we survive. Ava popped out of cover and pe peppered Alice's shields with bullets as shields run towards the reactor's control. Useless! With the personal shields still active, Ava's shots only bounced harmlessly off Alice. Bullets ricocheted against the floor as Alice opened fire and shields. He rolled away into the adjacent room, unable to reach the completely exposed reactor's console. No good. Shh. Ava slipped her now empty clip out and reloaded. However, she would need heavier weaponry to capture Alice's barrier. Alice merely paced toward Ava as she popped more rounds. <laughs> A 
sadistic sneer sliced Alice's face as the barrier deflected all of Ava's shots. <laughs> Alice wrapped her hand around Ava's throat and lifted her off her feet. <laughs> Sparks flew from Alice's hand as her barrier crushed Ava's throat. Ava. <sighs> but the dick is it all you've got? Alice tossed Ava to the floor like a ragdoll. She stomped on Ava's back with her plug suit's bladed soles. Yuff. <laughs> She'd brought down a pipe on Alice's head, sending her sable clattering to the floor. Really got a cut down on the speeches. The pipe crashed against the energy shield, sending the feedback jolting through his arm, but Shields mastered his strength. He wrapped himself around Alice, putting her into a sleeper hold as her energy barrier sheared through his uniform and flesh. The two of them struggled as Shields dragged her towards the flaming hot reactor core. You! Shh! Shields squeezed his eyes shut. He would drop Alice into the reactor shaft, even if he had to fall with, off with her himself. This would be the only way he could finally defeat Alice and save the future. If his life was the price to pay to save everyone, then he would gladly sacrifice himself. Once this is all over, the timeline is going to be fixed anyways, I'll just return to being the ship's captain. So, it's no big loss. Behind him, Ava raised her hand and gasped desperately as Shields lifted Alice off her feet. Sorry, Ava, but I'll see you in the next universe. Yeah. The reactor burst into a column of blue flame behind them, the outer panels melting away in the extreme heat. This would be a very frontal of pyre. The two of them arrived at the edge of the shaft. Beyond the safety rail was a sheer drop in the furnace of hellfire. Shields! He gritted his teeth and took another step towards into the sea of fire. His arms wrapped around Alice. This would be the end. Sorry about this, but... Some excruciating pain cut through his back. Ugh. Shields dropped to his knees in disbelief. What? <laughs> Dead bitch! His consciousness began to slip away as he realized here was now a combat dagger stuck to his back. No, you piece of crap! <laughs> Alice roared triumphantly. I have one shield! She pounded her chest. Even in this universe, my little doll proved your undoing! Iron ironic, is it not? For you to have so come so far and accomplished so much on to fall in the same manner! She collapsed to the floor when Shigara violently pulled the tiger from his back, tearing out muscle and blood. He saw that little piece of crap's empty face hovering above him. That's no that is her face. She used to smile No, that's not true. No, my doll. Kill him. <laughs> piece of crap. A red green slashed apart Shigara's face as she trusted the dagger downwards. <sighs> Shades opened his eyes and realized that Shigara's other arm had stopped the arm holding the dagger from penetrating his chest. For but a flicker. Lucy did it return to her to her eyes, what? Now's your chance! Get her, Captain! Ah, uh, right. She stored the dagger from Shigara's hand and dug into Alice's gut with all his might. Electricity surged through his entire body as the dagger cut into her shields. At last the barrier shattered to pieces. Yeah. Alice's face froze in shock as Shields repeatedly jabbed the dagger into her belly, forming a dozen new slots into her womb. I think it's time you died a second time. With that, he kicked her down the Sunrider's reactor shaft. For a second, Alice floated in midair. <sighs> At last, this nightmare ends. Arcadius, if only we could have died together. The second passed, and Alice fell down the shaft. She got covered Shield's body as Alice's body erupted in the enormous pillar of fire. The stench of burning flesh filled the room. Huh. The reactor. Understood. Uh, she scrambled the controls and firstly put the commands. Three, uh, I guess that right now her mind is not under control because everything was destroyed, kind of? Maybe? Streams of foam shot from every direction, laughing the reactor gallant. The flames around the reactor hissed and eventually fizzled out. Huh. <sighs> With a long sigh of relief, Shigara collapsed to the floor. Shields crawled over to Ava. Despite being covered with bombs, she nodded and gave a thumbs up. Oh, Ava. He wrapped his arms around her. We did it. 
Just then, old Claude burst into the as escorted by ship security. Oh, Captain! Despite their injuries, the two of them struggled to their feet. With grins on their blood-stained faces, Shields and Ava waved. Soon they were both on stretchers, while ship security detained Shigara, who had already surrendered peacefully. With Alice dead and Shigara never having entered the mind stream, there was no risk of Alice's ghost ever reserting control over her again. The crew rushed to contain the match in engineering as Shields was ferried towards Stick Bay. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> and sorry. Between the moving bodies of the crew, he saw a familiar socket of pink hair. Yeah, <laughs> looks like you pulled it off, Captain! A second cloud watched the events unfold from the shadows. Ah, I guess this is the end. If you ever need me, you know where to find me! But a blink later, she completely vanished from the universe. Shield closed his eyes. The past had been rewritten. The future had been saved. The Liberation Day massacre was averted. The world began to fade to white as the law of causality reconfigured the universe based on what had, he had accomplished. In the new verse which will be created, the Sun Rider would emerge triumphant during the Battle of Syria. That little piece of crap, the prototype spy, would be apprehended safely, and Shields would have prevented an intergalactic war between the Alliance and Pact. Not bad for a day's work! But next time, let's try to get it right the first time around. <laughs> hey, it was your fault, okay? Not mine! <laughs> oh, truly great! Oh yes! Now, people complaining about Sunrider Liberation Day being expensive. That's what you get after game being expensive and then the DLCs are free. And that's the, not the only ending, I said it. Uh, well, and you've seen it. 19 endings. Hey, 19. 18 endings. So yeah, we need to get them all! However, probably next time with a bit of help uh, from some guides, because I'm pretty sure there are already some somewhere out there. And yeah, we'll use them to, to get other. But probably it wouldn't be really that hard to get other endings. I guess it would just be the difference of choosing the person and then, I don't know, maybe like two different choices? That's all. This game is work. Uh, okay, coincidental. Oh, in space. Okay. Oh, it's not the end yet. Let's, let's, Shields knelt down before Mara's grave. At long last, he had put her soul to rest up in the mountain of their childhoods. Beside him, Ava laid a bouquet of flowers next to a headstone marking her father's final resting place. But are we sure that Mare is dead? Mare, I am sorry. You were so proud to hear I had finally become a captain. You told all, all your friends I would protect Sira, and the instant you found out. But I let you down, I let everyone down. Ever since that day, I swore to myself I would come back here. That I will take back what we lost that day. And after so many trials, here I am, finally home. Kaito! Marai put her head on his shoulder. What? What? You never had to blame yourself? Upon hearing her voice, tears dripped down his eyes. Aaron, you told me you were going to follow Abby. I knew you could do it. I knew you could become the biggest space captain there ever was and win against impossible odds. I'm not sad I came to see you off that day, even though I would still be alive. I wouldn't be able to call myself your sister if I missed a thing like that. Don't worry about me. Now, I can't watch over you from this mountain. What? No matter where you go, I look up to the night skies and find you somewhere among the stars. I know, you will be, you will always be mightiest captain who ever lived, who will defeat the biggest villains and save the galaxy over and over. Because you're my big brother, Kaito. You can do anything. You never let me down. Not even once. 
Marai. Shades gripped his fist and sobbed into her grave. I swear I never betray your trust. For as long as I live, I will defend everyone. No matter what my face me. No matter the odds, I'll fight on. So that I can return here and keep you company. I'll tell you stories of adventures, of narrow escapes and victories snatched from the jaws of defeats. You'll be on the edge of your seat each time. Murray, your brother is going to keep fighting. Sarah's not safe yet. There is more work to do. I'm not ready to quit being Captain Kaito Shields. Not yet. I am going to return to space. And this time, I'll be leaving you here. Mm -hmm. I keep watch from this mountain. Good luck, Kaito. And have a safe trip. Yeah, of course. Nobody's going to take down your big brother. <laughs> With that, Mara's apparition slowly faded away. She wrote her arms around Kaito's head. I love big brother. Keep us all safe, okay? Yep. It's a promise. Hmm. Hey, Claude, can't we move back in time to save her somehow? Murray vanished into the fall wind. The leaves in the forest rustled as her spirit echoed through the mountain before finally dispersing into the great beyond. Instead of lamenting her final disappearance, she stood with a tear soaked grin. <laughs> I'll be back, Murray. Guys, are you ready? Yep, how did things go in the end? My father always was a man of few words. I'm sure he would marry not and accept my return if he were still alive. But, perhaps deep underneath his cool and rational exterior, he'll be pleased to see me return alive, my mission a success. I may even venture as to say he might feel a tinge of pride in his old heart. <laughs> I'm making an idiot of myself now. Nope. You take after him in many ways. And I can tell from your smile right now, he would definitely be overjoyed as well. <laughs> I must have gone soft. Oh, thanks to your influence. Well, never hurts to smile every now and then. Heard it helps offset the effects of aging. Captain! <laughs> from the mountain, they could see that most of Syria City was still an enormous crater. The legion's attack had bored a scar into their beautiful city. One that they may never forget. But reconstruction efforts were already underway. The Alliance had already brought money, workers and resources to restore the city. While Fontana has likewise pledged to make amends for Pact's wanton actions. Shields looked to the remains of the city he once called home. There was still work to do. But for the first time in his life, he felt victorious. Not a fleeting sense of accomplishment after winning a small skirmish but an overwhelming sense of having won something important. It resounded through his entire body, giving him strength. With that, the two of them hiked back down the mountain. The sun set over Sierra National Park. The Liberation Day celebration had just ended. It was a grand affair, where Admiral Grey took to the stage to command the fighting spirit of Sarah, Sierra's only surviving assault career and presented Kaito Sheets with the Faraldan Cross. There was parades, a full orchestra, as well as enough alliance and pack dignitaries to last a lifetime. In reality, Kaito Shields did not care too much about receiving honors or trying to find influence by befriending powerful alliance fighter figures. Instead, his only thoughts were about... Captain, please do not stare at me with these, uh, those eyes! Uh, <sighs> Can you not see that we are surrounded by the most powerful men and women on the Alliance right now and under the lens of virtuality the entire galaxy's press corps? If word got out about our relationship, our reputation would surely be dragged through the mood in every tabloid from Solaris to New Eden. <laughs> Don't worry too much, it's not like Command can fire me at this point. Captain, you are far too lacked like a like a daisika about this whole affair. Uh, even your uniform is wrinkled. Uh, uh. Ava did her best to straighten his jacket. This is how the Gax is going to see Captain Kaiser Sheets. Not interested in presentation, I'm afraid. I'm just here to get the job done. I was sighed in hopelessness. Uh, Captain, I'm thankfully aware of that fact. Despite the old universe being destroyed, Ava and Sheets' feelings for each other remained. Even if they ruffled each other's 
feathers from time to time, Ava would always stand watch over the captain, if ever the loyal advisor and partner. In a way, the two of them were destined, from the very beginning, to stay together, a partnership where each one covered for the other. Standing alone, neither Shields or Ava could be described as perfect, but together they formed a complementary whole. In the end, they were respectively the father and mother of the Sunrider. You know, Ava, one time I thought about setting down on Sira after all of this was over. Just living the rest of my life out in a peaceful retirement, far away from danger. But do you suppose we could ever do that? Eh? Captain, my place on board the Sunrider. I was never too attached to this place. All it brings me are memories of my childhood. I can hardly remember my mother, but ever since she left, I remember a desolate household and a father who never designed to show a moment of affection during the few times of year when he was home. In fact, I quite enjoyed the thought of traveling the galaxy. I would rather not sink my roots too deep anywhere. I see. Shields looked at the damaged skyline of the city. Many of the buildings he remembered were now demolished and replaced with structural struts as reconstruction work commenced. I've always wanted to return to this place, but I guess home will always be where your family lives. There is nothing more for me to do here. I've concluded my business here. I think it's time for me to return to space too. There is still what we have left to accomplish together. What we say we continue. As captain, I think so. No? As partners? Sir! Now I began to sell, but called herself. Eh. I don't mean like it like that, Awa. I've always loved you. I wanted to stay by your side. Wherever you are will always be my home now. You're all I have left. No, that is far from the truth. Ava turned to where the crew of the Sunrider was chatting at the banquet table. We have them all. Shields looked at the girls he had gathered from across the galaxy. Asag was busy trying to get Sola to socialize with the others filling her plate with more food than she could eat. Ikari and Kritska were already busy arguing about Alliance Rider equipment. Meanwhile, it looked like Plot was being eye-ogled by a circle of important Alliance men. Seriously, what was she doing? Chatting up with those guys. Did she have some kind of geezer fetish? <laughs> oh, of course, geezers, oh, of course. <laughs> You're right. Shields put his arms around Ava. We'll protect them together, our crew. Let's return to our home. Yes, Kaito. But doubt creep into Ava's heart. Did she truly love the man called Kaito Shields? Was she capable of loving someone at all? Or was she but a calculating machine capable of only of crunching numbers and deducing detached conclusions from the cold hard data? She knew that one day Shields' feelings for her would prove his downfall and she would have to be there to save him when that day came. She made a resolution deep in her heart. She would always protect Shields even from himself, and to do that, she could not let his love for her blind him from what had to be done. I will always be exo above everything else. No! Perhaps that is the best gift I could give you. No! My days here were empty, the void of color, merely an endless repetition of the same pointless movements. Save for one thing, the sound of your laugh whenever I was frustrated, you drive me up the wall. But it was what got me through those times. In the end, it was you. What? Did you say something, Ava? No. I was merely murmuring to myself. Please disregard my sudden flight of fancy. In the matter, let us not stand here by our lonesome. We have much work to do. No? I personally intend to speak with the Alliance Finance Master so that we can acquire more funding for the reconstruction efforts. As the man of the hour, I fully expect you to do the same, Captain. Well, uh, you know, I'm not good at stuff like that. No, pass, Captain! The security of Syria is at stake here! Understood. With that, Ava pushed Shields away. Despite that, he secretly smiled to himself. He still remembered the look on Ava's face that night, when they... Well, that was certainly not the look of a woman with no sexual appetite for him! <laughs> no matter how cold she acted towards him, Shields knew that she wanted him with all her heart. What a complicated woman. But that's why she's worth it. Ah, well, I'm sure this will sort itself out. Eventually. One month later. 
After a much deserved period of R and R, Shields have finally returned to his trusty ship. While his dangerous hero went by in a flesh in the end, Shields could not rest easy until he had returned to what had become his new home. Wait, do we have a pirate in on the ship still? And top that, Shields had managed to transfer a certain prison to his ship, ostensibly for field counter intelligence purposes. He pressed the intercom and spoke with Shigara. Ah, not that one. Ah, come on, you don't need her! The, the pirate was more important. Ah, yo, piece of crap. Sorry about this one, but we're actually trying to build you a better one as we speak. For now, ah, please bear, bear with it. Don't worry, it doesn't bother me at all. In fact, it's Shigara who's sorry for everything. I know we have nervous baby, but I don't expect you to ever forgive me for what I've done, but never knew myself that the prototypes had planted me on board the ship. Uh, all this time I thought I was the sole survivor of the other construct, and that I was the ship's chief engineer, but it looks like I was fool too, wasn't I? Sure, just a fool all the time, playing right in the prototype's plans. Uh -huh. I wouldn't be surprised if the captain hates me now. Yes! Okay, no. That's not true. You're just a victim in this too, Shigar. You never knew what the prototypes were playing either. You were just an unwitting pawn. Honestly, i would be damned glad to have you as the ship chief again. Uh, don't say that. But as long as the alpha prototype still life lives, she can assume control of your body, so we can't let you out. Not yet. Not until you finally found the alpha and destroyed her. Then you'll finally be free again. Probably. I promise. Probably. I'll get you out of the seal, Shigara, and make sure the prize never take control of your body ever again. You have my words. But no! No! Oh shit! 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 Damn it, Kaito! You. Why did you say that? You raised the fucking flag here. Congratulations! Congratulations, Shields! You are again an idiot! Huh? Idiot? I heard you got me. Uh, don't mind you finding someone else. Obviously, he will find someone else! Uh, so, get some visits here, some visits from time to time, okay? Yeah, let me do anything. No. Understood. Here, I was happy about everything, and BOOM! He had to screw everything up. Shields entered his old office. He had spent countless hours in here, agonizing over plans to lead a one ship war against Pak and liberate Sira. After every victory, he felt as if he stood at the top of the world. He had somehow won against an overwhelming enemy. While some nights the wave of commanding the ship crashed down on his back, he would realize the futility of his mission, and despair he would most likely never survive to see a liberated Syria. Now that this mission had been accomplished, he felt surreal walking through all the memories he had of this office. His thoughts were interrupted by an unexpected noise. What? What the? Someone had placed a basket beside his desk. A dog popped its head out from the top and panted friendly at shields. Well, what do we have here? As if on cue, Ava slipped inside the office. <clears throat> hey Ava, are you the one behind this? Indeed, Captain. She straightened herself. In light of recent events, I thought animal companionship may help keep your never nerves smooth during our next voyage. As such, I have arranged for the transfer of an um, K9 unit to serve on board the ship. K9, yeah. Well, you definitely know me well. In fact, I used to have a dog which looked just like him. Don't you remember? I recall him going out. I hope his protege proves as real as Fleet Admiral. Uh, well, hell. Hardly a day on board the ship, and the dang mood already outranks me. She shook his head and delivered a salute to his new pet. Captain Kaljo Sheets, at your service, Admiral. He gave Admiral a scratch behind his ears and turned to Ava. Well then, Commander. Shall we get underway? Shields and Ava strode into the bridge of the Sunrider. What was the situation? Three days ago, Pack forces raided the Alpha prototypes, cloning fastly and the other, but by then it was already abandoned. Her current whereabouts are unknown. Our primary objective is the capture or destruction of the final leader of prototypes. Not only that, but we are needed for an urgent mission from the Alliance. Crow? 
Entire colonies have begun to vanish near them. Nemo and Sabins. We are to join a combined vast fleet. Investigatory fleet and find out what's going on. That's the crow. The crow guy. Ah, no, this plot line. Obviously, an alien race from another galaxy intent on destroying all of humanity. Before we get to power, we'll destroy ourselves or something. Captain, please refrain from unnecessary speculation. Besides, that idea makes no sense whatsoever. Most likely, it's pirates raiding colonies on nothing more. Ah, uh have. -huh. When will you ever learn? Wherever the Sun Rider goes, there will never be a dual mission. I will face bound. Unbelievable. <laughs> Get us underway, Commander. Understood. Helmsman! Helmsman? One tenth impulse is us out of port. Shields took one last look at Sira on the main screen. This was the home he had liberated with his own hands. No, not barely but his hands. He had help from men and women. Mostly women across the galaxy in accomplishing his mission. No matter how difficult their next voyage, he swore he would come back and see it again. We are to test our systems by launching all our riders and making one lap around the moon before entering warp. Sounds good. Girls! Black Jack, ready to go! <laughs> Let's get this out of the way! Sir! It is my privilege to continue to serve as your last liaison, officer! Standing by! Captain, you can order me to do anything! Obviously. Liberty standing by. A female voice he had never heard before sounded through the con. Eh? Who's that? Captain, command has transferred the new pilot to our wing now that Shigara is our prisoner. Not that, but she'll serve as the ship's new chief engineer going forward. All of this should have been the report. I left on your desk a week ago. Oh, that report! Yeah! Of course! I remember! Avastar daggers into Shield's face. Well. Oh. Must have missed that. <clears throat> Meanwhile, in the hangar, the new girl's voice sounded through Asaga's con. It's my greatest honor to serve under the world's famous Sunray Valkyrie Squadron. Well, I'm still experienced. Please take good care of me. Who is that? I never knew he we had a nickname like that. Who's that? Hey, it fits so, doesn't it? It's all right, Rock. First things first. Who's that? The complaints are taken, so give up your dreams of becoming his sweetheart. Please. Okay, don't tell me. I don't want to raise anyone's hopes. And mostly mine the hopes, probably. But do you think it's Mari, actually? And, you know, she's alive? Excuse me? I, I never. <laughs> I presently, at that moment, Deadliner, they activating, flinging the library out of the hangar. <laughs> Welcome aboard the team! <sighs> Captain, all four riders have launched! She stood at the front of the bridge, his eyes gazing at the vast sea of stars before him. Who knew what adventures awaited him out there? The sunray proudly sailed out of Sira, her riders flying in front of her. With what shields had given it his old return home, he knew his destiny lay among the stars, fighting against impossible odds to save the galaxy from every manner of doom. Who's... Who's piloting it? Damn it! Tell me! As long as villains exist in Galaxy, Shields and his girl girls and his girls would fight to stop them. He grinned. Set course. For our greatest adventure yet. Uh, uh happy um happy Ava ends. Okay! So we've got one! And we've got one. 70 to go! If I remember, one, two, three, four. Yeah. 17 to go. Alright, let's end it here. Next time I will probably be looking at how to go with the endings. To not repeat the same ending by mistake somehow and so on. And yeah, we'll get all of them. Cause why not? This was good. This was really good. This was really, really good. Alright, but I still want to know who's the pilot in that Sunrider. I don't believe it was our pirate girl. Which I would freaking love to have in the crew. But, well, I guess it won't be possible. 
Maybe at some time. If there will be another Sunrider, then yes. Hopefully, she will be in the crew. It would be awesome. Alright, for now, let's end it here. Hope you enjoyed it. I definitely need to cut this into parts, into shorter parts, maybe into one hour long both. We'll see. Well, you will already know by the time it will be uploaded. And I don't know it yet, so it's kind of weird. Well, never mind that. Hope you enjoyed the first road of Sunrider Liberation Day return. I was happy and hope you enjoyed it. And see you in the next one. Bye-bye.